So hello everyone. This is Dr. Chandni for the UPSC CMS 2023 recall session for Adia Plexus. So I hope you have done your UPSC exams good. So from pediatrics, we have got uh, at least 24 to 25 questions that is from pediatrics. That is the usual questions that comes from for UPSC from pediatrics. So uh, we're just going to see most of the questions uh, that has been already discussed. So those questions were mostly from the topic that has been discussed in the previous UPSC classes. Okay. So now the first question, the upper age limit of attainment of visual fixation or following is a birth, one month, two months, three months. See, as you see, this question was already discussed in the class. So these are some of the upper age of attainment of certain milestones. It means that till what age we can wait for these milestones to get attained in a particular child. If you see here, the upper age of attainment of visual fixation is around two months. So the answer for the previous question is, it is two months. Answer C, option C is the answer for this question. So coming to the other red flags or upper age of attainment. So vocalization, when the baby starts to make sounds. So approximately the upper age is at six months. Sitting without support by 10 months. Standing with support by 12 months. Hands and knees crawling by 14 months, standing alone 17 months, walking and speaking single words by 18 months, imaginative play by 3 years. If the child has not done these at the particular age group, at the upper age of attainment, it means the child is having some development delay and we have to evaluate this child. Now coming to the next question. A child develops stranger anxiety at so what do you mean by stranger anxiety? Stranger anxiety is on seeing a stranger, the child develops some anxiety. The child starts crying and making, becoming fussy on seeing someone new. That is called a stranger anxiety. So the answer for this question is, see, you already discussed the milestones, language and social milestones. If you see here, this stranger anxiety comes around six months of age. So the appropriate answer here would be, Six to seven months. So option C is the answer for this question. Now, what are the other social milestones that occurs in the child? So if you see here, two months, the first milestone that comes is social smile. Social smile is the child smiles and responds to something that is called a social smile. Three months recognizes mother. Six months, stranger anxiety. Nine months, the baby says bye-bye. One year, the baby can play simple ball games. 18 months, the baby can imitate household works. If mother is doing some work, the baby will imitate the work. Three years, the baby knows name and gender. Four years, the baby is dry by day, able to say the baby wants to pass urine or not. Five years, the baby can dress and undress. These are the other social milestones. Okay, going to the next question. For developmental assessment of a baby, grasp is best assessed by offering the child what? So you want to uh, assess whether the baby is able to grasp. So what will you offer? Is it a ring? Is it a cube, pellet or multicolored pellets? So if you see in the class, we have already shown this image. So can you see here? So for the immature pincer grass, what we are giving? We are giving a cube. Whereas for the mature pincer, we are giving a pellet. So the appropriate answer for this question would be a cube that is a red cube. So if you want to assess the grasp of the baby, you will use a red cube. So option B is the right answer. Next. Coming to the next question. Consider the following statements with respect to developmental milestones at 9 months of age. At this age, child develops immature pincer grasp. At this age, child can say bye syllables. At this age, child can wave bye-bye. So just now we have seen one thing. So nine months, the baby will wave bye-bye. So we are sure of that. What about the other two milestones? What about the other two milestones? Even these milestones were already dealt in the class. So as you see here, nine months, I have violated the nine months alone. Nine months, the baby says bye syllables like mama, dada. Nine months, the baby says bye-bye. Now coming to fine motor. Nine months, the baby has immature pincer. So these are the milestones at nine months. So coming to our question, yes, the baby has immature pincer grasp at nine months. Baby can say by syllables at nine months. Baby can wave bye-bye. So all the three options are right. 
So the right option here is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Fine. So we'll move on to the next question. What are the upper age limits by which a child should start walking alone, able to speak single words? So just now we saw the upper age limits. So for walking alone, it was 18 months. And for speaking single words also, it was 18 months. So again, I'm showing the same slide. I'm just highlighting it. So walking alone, 18 months. Single words, 18 months. So the right answer for this question is option D. 18 months and 18 months respectively. Now, going to the next question. Which of the following can be used for developmental screening in community to identify children aged 0 to 6 years with developmental delay? So, I have given four options. Revised Denver, Ages and Stages Questionnaire, Patak's Baroda Developmental Screening Test and Trivandrum. So, what are the developmental screening tests and what are the developmental definitive tests? So, this was already discussed in the class where I have given a list of the screening tests and definite tests. If you see here, the screening tests are PETS, Ages and Stages the Screening, Denver 2, that is the revised Denver is the screening test, Baroda, Trivandrum test, Clams test, Goodenough Harris drawing scale. All these are screening tests. Whereas, definitive tests are Bailey, Wineland, Weschler, and Stanford Binet. Now, out of these screening tests, which one will you choose for 0 to 60 months? So, among the options given, if you see the revised development screening test is like a, giving to a psychologist is assessing four domains. So, they will assess the domains of development here. Okay. Whereas, the next option, questionnaire. Here, questionnaires is given to the parents. So, the parents will fill the questionnaire and they will say. Okay, whereas ages and stages, it is used for ages 1 month to 5 and a half years. So, the age group is 1 month to 5 and a half years. Patak's Baroda Development Scale is used by psychologists. Only a child psychologist can use it. And here the age is 0 to 30 months. Whereas Trivandrum Scale is the which we can use for 0 to 60 months. See, it can be used for 0 to 60 months. And it is used in a community setting. Community setting. So the right answer for this is option D, Trivandrum, which can be used in a community setting for screening test. Okay. So moving on to the next question. What is the correct increasing order of minimum age at which the following vaccines are administered to the child as per national immunization schedule? So, I have given you four vaccines. So they are asking the correct order of schedule. BCG, Japanese encephalitis, rotavirus and TB. Now, we have discussed the national immunization schedule already in the class. So, according to this national immunization schedule, which is coming first? BCG is coming first. Then comes your rota vaccine. Then comes your JE vaccine. And then comes your TD vaccine. They have not given DPT. They have given TD. So, what is the order here? First, you will give BCG will come first, followed by rotavirus, followed by Japanese encephalitis, and followed by TD vaccine. So, what is the order here? It is 1, four, one 3, 2, and 4. So, the correct answer is option B, 1, 3, 2, and 4. Okay. Now, moving on to the next question. Which among the following vaccine best represents interventions that focus on cancer prevention too? Hepatitis A, Hepatitis B, H influenza B, human papilloma virus. They are given four options. You have to select which is the right, which can prevent cancer. Among these options, previously in the class, we have discussed about this new vaccine. That is the Cervavac. So I told you that the Cervavac is a vaccine that is used for human papilloma virus. In human papilloma virus, it has four strains, 6 and 11, 16 and 18. 6 and 11 are non-oncogenic and they can produce warts. Whereas 16 and 18 are oncogenic and they can produce cervical cancer. So from based on this, you know that the one vaccine is HPV. So we know that it is HPV is the answer. What about the other vaccine? Hepatitis A vaccine, 
no hepatitis a vaccine can prevent hepatitis a but hepatitis a is not going to cause cancer it will result in uh, acute hepatitis or very rarely hepatic failure but it is not going to cause hepatic cancer what about hepatitis b yes hepatitis b is a virus that can cause cancer so that is why hepatitis b can prevent cancer h influenza b it has nothing to do with cancer h influenza b is an infection either it can produce a meningitis kind of infection or it can produce a pneumonia kind of infection so it has nothing to do with cancer so the options here are 2 and 4 so the answer is option c 2 and 4 So moving on to the next question. A eleven-month-old unimmunized child has come for immunization. Which vaccine should be given in this child? So they have given you an unimmunized child, and you have to say that what are the vaccines we can give. So so many options are there. First, for this, you should know what are the vaccines that a eleven-month child should have already received. So going back to our national schedule. So see this national schedule. We will focus from birth to. Eleven months. Okay, so these are the vaccines your child should have received. So here you see OPV, BCG, hepatitis B, pentavalent, rota, IPV, PCV, MR, JE, PCV. All these your child should have received. So among these, what are the vaccines we are going to give to this child? First visit when the child comes, you should focus on these vaccines: BCG, hepatitis B, and the DPT. The first series vaccines, the primary vaccines only you should focus on. So. What are the options that has BCG? We have only two options with BCG. So among do, these two options, which we should select? BCG, OPV, DPT, hepatitis B, or BCG, DPT, MR vaccine? As I told you, the initial vaccine should be given first. So OPV and hepatitis B are important compared to MR because the child is only eleven months. At ten months only, we give MR. So we can give MR in the second visit also. But what is more important? DPT and hepatitis B. So among these two. This is a better option. So you will give BCG, OPV, DPT, and hepatitis B. Next visit, you will catch up with the other vaccines like MR also. Okay. Now, certain catch-up points I want to say here. BCG, according to National Immunization Schedule, you should give only within one year. If a child more than one year comes to you, you will not give BCG. Our child is eleven months old, so we are giving BCG. Rota. Rota virus. The first dose of rota virus should be given within sixteen weeks. Okay, the last dose of rota virus should be given within thirty-two weeks. So you are not supposed to give this more than one year. Same rota virus also. You are not supposed to give more than one year. Okay. Now coming to other vaccines. Okay. So BCG can be given because this is a eleven-month-old baby. Okay. So the better option is option A. Now, coming to the next question, the event related to vaccination which can be contraindicated for the next vaccination is so. What is the contraindication? A. Syncope following MMR vaccine, encephalopathy following DPT vaccine, abscess at injection site, gastroenteritis following MMR vaccine. Out of these four, what is the contraindication? So when we discussed these in the class, we discussed about the individual vaccines. If you have seen here in this. I have discussed about DPT and I have told about the contraindications for DPT. So, what are the contraindication? Progressive neurological deficit, encephalopathy within seven days, and anaphylaxis. These three are contraindications. So, having known this, among this option, we have encephalopathy following DPT. So, encephalopathy following DPT is a absolute contraindication for the future doses of DPT. Okay. What about the other options? Syncope following MMR, it doesn't have any link to vaccine constituent. It could be because of pain shock also. If so, that is not a contraindication. Abscess as induction site, it is a vaccine administration error. It is not because of the vaccine. It is because of the improper administration. So that can also not be a contraindication. Gastroenteritis following MMR is a coincidental finding. It doesn't have anything to do with MMR, so coincidental findings are also not contraindications. So only contraindication here is option B. 